name is Vincent Martinez Grieco, and I am a dancer, artist, who designed a body of work of conscious dance known as soul motion. I think of a conscious dance as being a portal or a vehicle in the dance room, viewing and uh, experiencing particular types of inquiries that prepare me for the everyday dance, for the way I aspire to live a life um, fully more attentive, more compassionate. I loved my training. I, you have to understand, I was, I was a 27-year-old Vietnam vet who found himself surrounded by young, vibrant, healthy people who love to move and, and love to dance and offered structure. And I just ate it up. I just, I, I, I remember my ballet classes with a, a, a real person playing a piano, playing classical music. And, and my teacher, this elder woman, you know, a, a former ballerina, uh, barking out instructions and I was in heaven. I found so much freedom holding on to the bar. I learned how to roll and tumble and balance and run, how to articulate my foot, how to land out of a jump, uh, you know, uh, how to turn, which is my favorite thing in the whole world to do. <laughs> I learned about energy and force and time and, and um, level, levels and uh, body mechanics. Uh, you know, learned anatomy and all of that at the time just was like, you know, I, I felt like a little kid. I was, I never felt inhibited or, or like I had a collar on. I, I just felt that my technique was freeing me up. I studied a number of forms I was associated with uh, outside of the traditional ballet, but a number of my teachers were members of Merce Cunningham's company, his early company and in his second company. So I got a lot of derivative of, of Merce Cunningham, which, um, as a, which was, um, wow, how generous and how fortunate for me, uh, because you know he emphasized the bottom of the body being ballet, but the top of the body being very, very modern and expressive. So I got to use some of my ballet skills and strength in the legs and also the fluidity of the upper body, uh, which still is with me today. I also studied uh, extensively with Eric Hawkins and the Hawkins technique. Um, that was uh, renowned because uh, his company members <laughs> didn't wear, uh, let's see, is it the tights? Yeah, they didn't wear tights, they just wore leotards, so our legs were exposed. And uh, I love that look. I just love it. was something very primitive about going into his class. And, and there was a lot of like, so, it was contraction in the Martha Graham style, but much softer. I think he was married to Martha Graham, actually one of her husbands. So I studied, I went to New York actually to study with his company and um, was in, it was very interesting to be there. It was my first foray into wanting to make it in New York but I realized I wouldn't be a member of this company. All, the, all his men were Germanic and tall and blonde. Ain't gonna happen. Uh, but but I, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed what, I, what I received from him. And, and uh, I had a, a, a very important teacher in my life, Jose Brown, who was a Limon dancer who studied with Jose Limon. And I worked, very, as a matter of fact, Jose Brown took me on my first ever dance performance in Eugene, Oregon. Um, at the Wow Hall, where I basically ran around for 12 minutes to a piece of, of uh, new classical music after I recited a poem from a Vietnamese general. And uh, I received the standing ovation and I was hooked. I knew, oh, I want to perform. <laughs> I want to perform. So I, I had uh, some training in Limon. So I, I, I was also, I had the good fortune of being at the university uh, uh, in the late 70s when there was a lot of um, uh, funding and so a number of uh, dance theater of Harlem, Alvin Ailey, Alvin Nikolai, companies who would come in residence at my universities for like a month or two. So I got to study um, with a lot of major companies right there in Portland. So I, I've, I've had a very well-rounded um, training as a, as a dancer. 
I started teaching dance like within a year after I found dance. I just wanted to teach what I was learning. I took my training and um, started teaching modern dance, jazz dance, aerobics. I just taught <laughs> whatever was available, whatever was in front of me, I was teaching. I was asked today, actually, what, what did I want to be? And I, the three things I wanted to be growing up were, <laughs> I wanted to be a social worker. No, first, I wanted to be a priest. I wanted to be a priest. I wanted to be a social worker. And I wanted to be an early childhood educator. And, and, and someone said to me, well, you got to be those things. I discovered so many teachers and so many influences on me, and, and Gabrielle Roth was, was certainly one of them. Um, and what did she bring to me mostly that I hold her in my heart so dearly was the, the idea of, because I was doing a lot of performing, and, and here I was finally in a session where dancing with people became very exciting. Uh, as opposed to just dance, because I would just teach class and then I'd perform. And, and I got somehow, I got to meld the two of those things so that I was suddenly dancing with people rather than uh, for people. And that was a huge gift I got. I love seeing people moving, not necessarily trained dancers. And I got to um, re recognize that there was a wider audience uh, for people who wanted to come in and do what I was doing and who weren't trained. And that was like, yeah, that was another gift I got from my association with her. I remember going out and starting to teach five rhythms and feeling uh, very close to the work and excited about the work. And then realized at one point that it was time for me to move, move along, you know, and, and start to design something a little bit um, more closer to what was interesting to me as an artist. I have a certain sensitivity and sensibility that I bring to my daily life. Um, and creation and maintenance and this dissolution impermanence is my full-time job. As an artist, that's their job, you know, to embrace impermanence. So, so that will never leave, I don't think. Um, that's been with me since I was four years old. I see my students that way. I see them as, as, as movement artists who they come in to learn this artistry of being. Your whole self comes into an experience, the body wisdom, the wisdom of your breath and the wisdom of, your, of, of gravity, the wisdom of your shifting in place, the wisdom of internal space, um, the wisdom of pausing and, and quietude that they come into your everyday experiences, that they're part and parcel of how one communicates and how one um, receives. I am not a spiritual teacher. My teacher, Shambhavi Saraswati, is my spiritual teacher. I am not a spiritual teacher. Now, some people may come and feel the spirit of, of life and movement and feel close and holy, but that's not, I don't see myself that way. I'm a dance artist who, come, who brings spirit into the room. Or, or no, I don't bring spirit into the room. Who, who's open to receive this, the essence of the moment, right? And who's open to receive the essence of the moment and the essence of our relationship and the essence of our communication and the essence of our dance. So if you want to call that spirit, great. And if you think I'm teaching spirituality, that is you on you, that's not on me. The process of codifying what my personality as, as you know as a teacher into a into a modality and a form was because I had people around me who were um, able to do that and help me. I, for the longest time, kept saying, "I can't teach this stuff. I'm just moving what moves me, and I don't know how to f put it in an order." I can't sequentialize it. I don't know what to do there. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going in there and opening up and saying, okay, let's, let's see what's here. Zuza Engler was helping me and I had Anna Marti who helped me and I had um, uh, Winky Wheeler who helped me and Liz Gantz who helped me, force me to put down, <laughs> uh, you know, like uh, sequence. 
And um, what is it, left brain or right brain? <laughs> left brain, left brain stuff, you know, make a list. And what comes, what are you doing? What are you teaching? Uh, so I had a lot of great help and, and it felt, I felt like, okay, I'll do this. There's, there's a request for it. And now it seems like there's a, a number of really talented, qualified, loving, caring, talented, creative people who um, would like to take it further. And, and I, th I think what we've done, I hope, is what we've done is that we've given it just enough structure, like a foundation and maybe a frame that people can come in and, you know, put the room, put as many rooms as they want in there, color the rooms they want, and, and, and then put the furniture in the rooms that they desire so that they can make it their own. I feel like a, like a good parent that I want to really ensure that my, 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 the ch my children are cared for and, and, and are prepared for the world and then uh, let them go out into the world and do what they want to do. And, and I would like to continue to explore what's moving through me as a teacher, as an artist, and not be confined by any modality, any modality. I think it's time for a new design as the next steps that I'm really feeling called to, to express. for bridges over walls and uh, I'm happy this bridge is wide to, so more than one of us can walk at the same time like what? <laughs> <laughs>